Virginia's Blue Ridge is truly America's East Coast mountain biking capital. In this campfire chat, we talk with Stuart Lamana, president of Blue Ridge Off-Road Cyclists, about what makes this region so unique and how volunteers and cycling enthusiasts are developing an even better network of places to ride. All right, so we're sitting here in Roanoke, right, which is the heart of Virginia's Blue Ridge, right, which uh, you know, I guess maybe a couple years ago became a IMBA, you referenced IMBA, right? So they became an IMBA uh, Silver Level Ride Center designation. That's right. So what does that mean, a ride center? And what does Silver Level mean? Oh, ride center is a uh, IMBA designation for a level of uh, trails and uh, support for those trails that a community might have. So Silver Level Ride Center, you know, entails a certain number of miles of trails and different levels of um, skill required for those. It also reflects on the uh, amenities like breweries, hotel accommodations. You might have great trails somewhere, but if you don't have a place you know, to hang your hat at the right. end of the day, um, you know, it's not gonna be quite a silver level ride center. So it's kind of like, the, it's kind of a testimonial that you have as a community, everything that uh, uh, somebody planning a mountain bike vacation is gonna want. All right, so let's get back to Brock, Blue Ridge Off-Road Cyclists, and the things that you're doing. You talked about you guys do a lot of trail work. For the most part, it's all volunteers. Uh, different organizations uh, all pitch in to help out. Uh, there's tons of backcountry trails. This is, these are trails in the National Forest. And that's what we're really blessed with, is tons of backcountry trails. CCC trails from the, the Great Depression era, jobs programs. Right. Um, Trails, uh, you know, Dragon's Back is one of our best trails out there. That used to be the old Appalachian Trail before they moved it over to Maxby's Knob. So now you can ride your bike down this old trail. It's over 20 miles and it's all ridgeline riding. It's some of the best backcountry trail riding I've ever seen. Again, you know, these trails are really kind of built and maintained by volunteers for the most part, right? Um, and that's where Brock comes into play, right? We've reworked several trails at a place called Carvin's Cove. Uh, OG and Royalty are some um, fun mountain bike specific trails and these are trails that are just for mountain bikers. You won't find equestrians or hikers on these trails, they are one directional and um, they're, both of those trails are advanced trails at Carvin's Cove. Uh, we're also building a new intermediate trail at a place called Explorer Park which um, is a jump line. So a jump line is a trail progressive jump line is a trail that you can ride, you can roll, and then when you're feeling comfortable, you can roll it faster and try to even get in a few jumps. And then if you're young, then you can do it on your first try. How, how many miles are you at Explorer Park right now? Um, Explorer Park? Yeah. I think there's about seven miles. Okay. And so they're building more miles. We're, we're working on expanding the trail infrastructure at Explorer Park. Okay. So. Because I know that that's a great place where you can tube the river. Uh, you can go for a bike ride, then you can tube in the river, and then you can go over to Twin Creeks Brew Pub yeah. and have a beer afterwards, yeah. right? Um, so it's like a, a, the trifecta of a day for a mountain biker in, in, in some way. Explore Park is up and coming, and we're trying to help it uh, become a destination for mountain bikers. A lot of people don't realize that these awesome trails on Mill Mountain or at Carvin's Cove or Explore Park are, are being built and maintained by volunteers. I think we take that for granted as a community. What are the ways that the community can support Brock and support the trails in the process? Well, we're a membership organization. And as a chapter of EMBA, people can actually join Brock as a member. So I join as a member and that money, how, how do you guys put that money to work? Well, um, a lot of times we'll rent equipment, uh, which uh, help make our job as trail builders a lot I'm talking easier. about like skid steers and backhoes and backhoes. Okay. Um, uh, you know, just any kind of equipment that we need. Also, we buy equipment. So right now, Brock is um, getting ready to purchase a skid steer thanks to Roanoke Outside. Uh, the Roanoke Outside Foundation and their grant program, we've applied for a grant and we're hopefully going to get a skid steer that'll help us maintain trails on a regular basis. What's I understand if you won't want to share this info, but what is like your favorite kind of little hidden gem trail? Actually, one of the trails I like the most is uh, a trail called Rattling Run. And it's a incredibly difficult technical trail. And 
I have never been able to clear all the obstacles on it. And I know very few people who have. You have to be what they call a trials rider, practically, in order to be able to get over all these rocks and get through all the gnarly, you know, technical stuff. I watched that episode when Jeff Lenoski came yes. to GoFest one year, and he, <laughs> and he went up there and filmed the Trail Boss series. He did uh, it. Show. I did watch that, so <laughs> when I look at it, I've been on Rattle and Run. I've no way close to clearing it. No. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it is a really, really cool trail. We had all the head people from Imbuk uh -huh. come out and some of these guys are incredible world-class riders and we took them up the rattling run and none of them they, um, they might cancel our charter if I say <laughs> this but none of them were able to clear all their features on rattling run right. <laughs> so it's that difficult of a trail it's a real hard double diamond technical trail what are some other you know kind of things you know down the road that you know that you're excited for one of the things that Brock specifically focuses on is mountain bike specific trails so we have a lot of traditional trails, which we love, the backcountry trails. But you we mean trails that only, uh, only mountain bikes can go on? Well, not necessarily, but trails that are optimized for mountain bikes. They might be multi-use trails that anybody could use, so but they might have a little, hiking trails. a little bit different than just a hiking specific trail. Okay. So you might have a little feature off to the side that a mountain biker could roll or jump over or huck. That's one of the okay. things that we do as mountain bikers. and. Um, and, and to add that to the infrastructure that we already have, that's kind of our goal. Man, thanks for sitting with me. Uh, you know, it's people like Stuart and Brock that are making this community so awesome. So when you're out there, you know, planning your next adventure, remember that wherever your adventure takes you, Roanoke Outside is there for you. Mm -hmm.